if you're looking for a cheap and easy way to add a touch user interface to your Clipper 3D printer, then look no further. Today, we set up CYD Clipper for under $10 and in only two minutes. I always enjoy covering upgrades where you can follow along easily because the upgrade is so cheap and easy, with this video being an example of that. In short, if you're running Clipper firmware, there are some good options available for an interface. But now we have another with CYD Clipper. Previously, I made a video on various options for an interface for Clipper, so let's do a quick recap. Option zero in that video was to run headless, just use the web interface. Option one was to recycle an old mobile phone or tablet. This is the simplest option as you just need to provide it with power before employing the inbuilt web browser to access the IP address of the printer. With this option, we have complete control of the printer, but it can be hard to get the browser to go full screen and to get the tablet to sleep nicely. Option two was to recycle the dedicated LCD with click wheel. Like with other firmware, this would need to be connected directly to the main board and then the sample LCD configuration could be used along with the pins for your specific MCU to repurpose the LCD to work with Clipper. I didn't mind this option as it did allow me to input custom menu items, but I did find it time consuming to scroll through all of the menus to reach some of the features that I would use more often. My other complaint is that the display never goes to sleep, so if the printer's on, the room will have an eerie blue glow at night. Option three, and easily the best and most popular, is to use Clipper Screen. The downside of Clipper Screen is how involved it is to set up. There are great guides available, but depending on the touchscreen that you utilize, there may be extra steps that are a pain, such as directly editing the Raspberry Pi configuration files. There's also the cost of the touchscreen, which can be significant depending on which one you select. Of course, difficulty will vary depending on the hardware combination, but in any case, you're going to be running commands from SSH to finish the installation. The payoff is totally worth it, which is why I'm running Clipper Screen on all of my Clipper machines except one. Clipper screen is attractive, intuitive, and easily customizable. But each of these existing options has pros and cons. Therefore, today we are exploring a new option, CYD Clipper via such main many skill. In my opinion, it offers functionality approaching that of Clipper screen, but with the super simple setup and wiring of a recycled tablet. Best of all, you won't need to spend much on hardware. There's only one item and it's cheap. We're talking under US $10 for everything you need. Previously, I made a video about X-Touch, a touchscreen add-on for Bamboo Lab P1P and P1S printers. If you've seen that, you'll notice that CYD Clipper display is very similar. To get started, the first thing we need to do is scroll down until we get to the required hardware. That'll take us to this repo from Witness Me Now. And under where to buy, you'll have a choice of links. The price will vary, so test them all and find the best deal at the time. Typically, these come with a stylus, a USB power cable, and you can select options for an enclosure if you don't want to 3D print one. However, you'll still need to adapt this to your machine. I've ordered a couple of these now and this unboxing is pretty typical. They come in a nice plastic case that you can reuse for something else. The main microcontroller and touchscreen will be sealed in a bag. And one of the defining features of this unit is the yellow PCB, hence the nickname Cheap Yellow Display. For this project, we won't be using the micro SD card slot, but you will need to familiarize yourself with the buttons on the rear in particular, the boot button. If you power the unit via the included USB cable, you'll more than likely find some sort of demonstration program is pre-installed. Have a play with this if you like, but the important thing is you're verifying that everything's in working condition. The best part awaits and that's installation. It's automated and it's literally only two minutes. This step is simple and the instructions are brief, but they do assume you already have a driver installed on your computer that will talk to the touchscreen. You can test this by connecting it to your computer, coming to Device Manager, and seeing if it's listed as a COM port. There's a fair chance you'll already have the driver if you've 3D printed much before. If you don't already have the driver installed, I'll link this page below that will take you through step by step. Back to our instructions, and we're going to click the link for the web-based installer. All we need to do on this page is to click Connect, and then from the list provided, select the COM port of our connected screen. After a few seconds, we'll be presented with the button to install CYD Clipper. Clicking this will only give us one option. And for the first time we install, we're going to tick Erase Device. However, as the instructions state, if we're updating in future using this website, 
we can leave the box unticked to retain data. Before we click the install button, we need to find that boot button that we discussed earlier. Once you click install, a split second later, press the boot button and this will kickstart the installation process. Initially, the previous program will be erased and then in under two minutes, CYD Clipper will be flashed to the inbuilt ESP32 MCU. The flashing will then verify and when that's successful, you'll get a confirmation that everything is complete. During the install, it's normal for the screen to be completely blank. But as soon as it's done, you'll be prompted to calibrate the touchscreen and I recommend using the stylus for this by precisely tapping on the two crosses that are presented. Next up, you'll be presented with a list of Wi-Fi networks. You'll select the one you want and input the password. Finally, we need to connect our Clipper instance to the screen. This is also simple. We just go to our web browser and get the IP address on our local network for the printer. The port can remain as 80 and we click the tick to connect. Despite being physically separated from the printer, CYD Clipper is already fully functional. We'll explore these features soon, but for now, let's organize an enclosure. The printer this is going on is my FL Sun Super Racer, and previously I converted that to have a conveyor belt bed for automatic part ejection and continuous queued 3D printing. If you want to check that out, I've linked the video below. This printer is running a blue LCD, and for some reason I made it detachable. This was annoying because it jiggled around, and also the knob was positioned so that it rubbed on my printed holder, completely my fault. The good news is I had already designed this unusual angled piece that allowed me to adapt everything to the unusual vertical extrusions of the Delta. And I had already designed this cheapular display enclosure to fit onto the P1P based on the step file provided by experiments when they release X-Touch. Therefore for this install, I had all of the pieces and just needed to modify them further. And that's exactly what I've done. I've uploaded both the SDLs and a step source file to printables. And hopefully this makes it easier for others to adapt CYD clipper display to their own 3D printers. The base section of this system has six generic holes so people can design an adapter to suit their printer. The main case then slides over the top and the holes should provide access to the SD card as well as a USB port on the end. To begin assembly, you would take your adapter or mount and bolt it through the holes in the back of the case. I've sized the openings big enough for M4 and there should be plenty of clearance on the inside to make sure the bolts aren't touching the back of the display and causing any shorts. The front cover then slides over and we use four M3 bolts, 12 millimeters is a good length, that go into each of the corners and cut their own thread on the way in. The design should be compatible with countersunk and other types of bolt heads. You can now take your completed sub-assembly and attach it to the printer's frame to complete your physical installation. In terms of wiring, we only need five volts and the supplied USB port is great for that. I ran a USB cable out the side of the enclosure and then plugged it directly into the Raspberry Pi as the power source. It doesn't get much easier than that. Our installation is now complete, so let's explore the features fully as well as customization. The default idle screen will list all of your files available to print. And if you have a fresh clipper install like me with no files loaded, you will see this message failed to read files. However, once you have uploaded G-code, the files will be listed here with automatic scrolling of long file names if needed. The next tab down is for movement. From here, you can home the machine, disable steppers, and manually move your X, Y, and Z axes. You'll also notice the Z value is permanently displayed on the left-hand column. The third tab is temperature and extrusion. We have one touch buttons to set the bed and nozzle temperatures. There's three presets for each. And if we toggle edit presets, we can then tap on any of these buttons and enter the new preset target temperature. Toggle edit presets back off and the change is saved. We can also press the set button for nozzle or bed to set the temperature for either to an exact value of our choice. It's also worth pointing out that the current nozzle and bed values are permanently displayed in the left hand column for easy reference. Finally, when the nozzle is up to temperature, we have buttons to manually extrude or retract filament from the hot end. Our last tab is for macros, which we'll cover shortly, but also for the overall settings of CYD Clipper. By pressing the button up the top, we have a menu full of useful options. For instance, we can invert the colors, switch between light and dark mode, and we have a full assortment of color schemes to choose from too. This should let you match the display to what you have on your web interface. We can get the screen to time out and turn off after a specified time, and we can also select whether we want it to remain on during the printing process. And if you need to turn your display upside down for mounting, rotate screen is your friend here. 
And finally, once we start a print, we have a confirmation dialog before we switch to the print progress screen. The timer for which will start once the heating finishes and the extrusion begins. That's just about everything apart from macro, so let's address that now. Especially since I need my eject macro to spit out this finished cube. On the macro tab we have an instruction. Add the description cyd underscore screen underscore macro. This is actually really simple to do. Just come to the printer configuration file where your macros are stored and for any macros that you want to be displayed on the new screen, add a new line as you see here, description and then a colon and then the exact string that we saw on the screen, cyd underscore screen underscore macro. When you're done, save and restart to load the new configuration. And now on the macro tab, any of your macros that you added this description will now appear. Running them is simply a matter of pressing the run button, giving you access to any specific printer features that you desire. For me, the most basic part of the interface is the print progress screen, because it lacks things like Z offset correction. But I think macros are the way around this. For instance, you could run a Z offset command, copy that code and put it into a macro, and then you would have convenient access to this on the macro tab. Just a quick note, you'll see me using a stylus a lot in this video, but that's so my finger doesn't block the camera. A stylus is not required, using your finger will work just fine. And that is it. We don't get quite as much control as Clipper Screen, but we do get very easy installation with cheap hardware. Ultimately, it's nice that we all get more choice, so let me know in the comments what you think of this option. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.